What's up? What are we talking about? Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the legendary, the illustrious Saeed. Saeed, uh, please tell uh, the ladies and gentlemen on YouTube uh, what they're supposed to do. Tell them what they need to do. You got to like, follow, and subscribe the to the Happy Bill. Like, follow, and subscribe like, to the Happy like, Bill. Like, follow, and subscribe. You can yeah. share. You, you can share. share. Yeah. Uh, you comment. Can make, you can leave a comment. Yeah. You can ask questions if there's things you, you want to see. ask questions if you have like a technique request. Yeah. If you see Mike making a face and your professors made that face, tell yeah. us that story. Yeah, yeah. If, it's you, yeah. Uh, if you have time, you can read the video description. That's another thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Everybody, be like Mohamed Saeed. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, watch all the video, share with everyone you know, uh, read the video description. Happy birthday. Project. Yeah. Uh, I'm Brandon, if any of you don't know. Uh, I've been at me and Jason and Dave, we... We were here when it was like six of us in the class. All right. Uh, we're going to be doing legs today. Uh, a lot of people know, but if you don't, Eddie used to train with me while he was here most of the time before he wound up going to the, they started the whole squad thing. And Robert Deagle is one of my black belts. So we're going to be going over legs and starting in this position that I actually came up with here that I called it a Bermuda Triangle. Why? Because I, once you got inside of the position, it was like you were caught, quote unquote, the Bermuda Triangle. You kind of got lost in there. So we're going to start there and we're going to shoot to an inside Senkaku position and work from there. Go over like three moves really quick. All right. So I usually get to it when a person is trying to pass me. So let me use uh, Boris. Typically, I like to keep my legs to me. I always teach my guys, keep your legs to you. Anytime I feel like my knee is past the line of my hip, I feel like I'm gonna get past. So what I like to do is wait, because I know that if my legs are close to me, they have to touch me, which means now I can touch them. So my first initial grip is I do a shin, almost a shin block. So when they try to step in, as long as I keep my knees here, now I know I can get contact. And I always try to keep an inside position where I can use this foot to frame or pummel. If they start pummeling around, I'll just pummel it back inside. I always try to keep this inside position. I'm looking to control my partner's knee and his ankle. Okay? So that if my partner tries to rip away or tries to run, I'm attached to them. I'm always trying to keep, almost like you would say, two opposing forces. One at the ankle, one at the knee, and one at the shin. My idea is to get this foot on the inside. When I get this foot on the inside, I like to hook and bring my partner just a little bit. What I do is I use my heel on my partner to lift myself. So if you notice, my heel on the inside allows me to lift myself up onto my partner. As long as I'm pulling my partner's knee, they can't move. If he tries to back step, or tries to move that foot away, all I do is pull on the knee. That allows me to bring my partner closer. I look to get a knee control. I don't like crossing my foot. You'll see some people say cross your foot, but you'll notice that if you cross your foot, it'll allow your partner to push your knee, push your knee down to try to clear it. If they stand and they start to push my knee, they'll be able to push my leg down. We'll address that, but Initially, what I like is a foot-to-foot -foot grip. So that if he goes to push my knee down, it's hard. So I have what we would call like a double trouble. I'm controlling the top of his knee, not the bottom of his knee. The top of his knee. Even again, if my partner tries to take this foot away, as long as I can use this knee and flare this knee out, I'll be able to bring that leg to me. I'll put my partner down. Once I put my partner down, before I move anywhere, I pinch my legs together. If you keep your legs flared, it'll be loose and your partner will start to work his way in or try to pummel his foot inside or try to turn his foot inside. I keep my legs tight so that my partner can't move and I try to bring the ankle so I can control the heel. So that this way when I go, Notice I try to get a bend in my partner's knee so that when I go around, 
I have a good flare on his ankle. I haven't switched yet to two grips. Typically, I usually just hold it. When I'm training with my partners, if it was a tournament, you would go all in. But here, I'm just holding it. Okay? So one more time. When you're playing, always keep yourself on your side. Don't stay flat. I'll always use my foot to turn myself just a little bit. And it allows me to hold on. Inside, I use this heel to lift myself. See how I pull my partner's knee? And I'll step on it. If I can't get to step on it, I just crisscross. I never do this. Just crisscross initially until I can get the step. Flare my partner out. Put him down on the ground. Pinch my knees. Do not grab your partner here on the bottom of his knee. He'll just pull his foot out. If you control his knee and you tuck your elbow inside when he goes to pull his knee, it's real difficult. Now, I can shrug it up. Again, when I attack, I don't let this go until I get this initial grip. When I get this initial grip, then I can let go. You'll start to feel a tension on the leg, on the inside of the knee. Okay? One more time. Keep your legs to you. Notice how I kip on my side. I keep a sticky shin. So again, if they try to run, I'm connected to my partner. Heel, hook, lift. Don't pull your partner, but lift yourself. So you get that initial knee on the stomach and you can get this grip. Everybody got it? One, two, three. Let's go. A false reap usually starts from this position. Okay, where I'm bending the knee. But my foot is on the inside. And I'll have to scoop inside and then I have to clear this bottom leg in order to get into the position of inside Senkaku. What I did is said, I don't want to have to try to clear that bottom leg. Because trying to clear that bottom leg, if you've got a guy who's got a really good sticky hook, it's going to be hard to clear that bottom leg. So what I did is I said, okay, I want to do it but I don't want to have to clear a bottom leg. I'm already inside. See how I kind of lift myself up? And I control a bend in his knee. Why? He wants to extend his leg straight. But as long as I keep this knee bent, it's very hard for your partner to stay upright. Very hard for them to stay upright. If I don't have this, it doesn't matter. What I need is this. Even if he tries to stay upright, I'll just keep flaring it out and I'll start to play with his balance. That initial Kazushi, where I'm kind of like, I'm hanging on that one leg. And I'm, oh, immediately, I'm keeping his leg bent. How I keep his leg bent is I'll put my foot, my hand, almost on the bottom of my partner's foot and kind of drive his foot in. So that this way, if he goes to straighten his foot, he's running into the inside of my arm. Because he wants to straighten his leg, but he can't straighten it. And I'm tight. I haven't added the second hand. I'm just keeping his pressure. All right, everybody got it? One, two, three. Hard time lifting your butt. There's a second way to do it. Give me the boy. Again, notice when I want him. Most of you who played with me know I do this Bermuda sh shit everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll take my heel and I'll hook my heel on the inside of the hip and I'll lift myself. See how I lift myself? And then I'll put my foot on the inside. So I'll actually latch on to the inside of the hip, lift myself. Then I'll put my foot on the inside. So I'll latch onto the hip. Again, there's nothing wrong with false reap. 
You understand? Starting in here. But my whole initial thing with false reap is this. I've got to clear this bottom leg. If they want to keep this leg, and I'm trying to clear this leg, and I'm shaking, it's very hard, especially if they sit. This essentially takes care of that because I'm going through the back behind his leg, not in front of his leg. If my partner goes wide, like somebody was asking me, see what he does? He opens up space. He either opens up space for me to go backside 50-50 or go to a knee bar or come all the way around and go 50-50 again. So people think by widening their legs, okay, I'm not going to get caught. No, you're just going to give me space to spin inside. Heel, lift. Whatever you decide, it's up to you if he opens his legs. Okay? One, two, three, let's go. I used to do it, initially when I started it, I used to start it at the bottom and then shoot my way to the top. When I showed it, Eddie and Robert like to always shoot straight to the top. I Me, mean, I like to stay at the bottom and then bring you down and I would do a, a bear trap or a hamstring. So initially I would start here, but what would happen is people would start to push my knee down and I would just accept it. So you see what happens is once I accept it, their leg is trapped. I would do this and I would just hold. So I'd scoop on the knees and I'll just open my hip. When I open my hip, you feel a pressure. And a lot of people would always try to touch my feet here and go for stuff. And I just, I'll just open up. You'll feel your hip and your knee. What it does is it, you know, you have an ACL and you have the femur bone and the lower tibia bone. What I do is I stretch the ACL. Essentially, that's what I'm doing. I'll hold and I'll just open up. Or I'll step on my foot and open up. So sometimes I play here and people will start pushing the ankle. I'll be like, okay, no problem. I just open up here. This is all I need. Control. And I get this grip. See this gable grip I'm getting? And I'll just open my knee. I flare my heels like I'm doing a triangle. And I open my knee. Okay? And what would happen is people would feel that pain and they would try to shoot their legs straight. And if they shoot it straight, guess what? We're back in the same position in the inside synchrosis. So either they'll accept that bear trap, they'll feel the pain and they'll be like, oh shit, they'll come back. You'll fear that bear trap. First thing when you get this bear trap, you have to control this because I need this leg. When they feel that initial bear trap, People will start to kick their leg. Let them kick their leg. That's fine. I'm back to where I want it to be. Inside Senkaku. Bringing them down again. Stepping on the foot. Pinching everything tight. Pinch everything tight. Don't do this. If you do this with your partner, you'll feel your partner start to move. I'm here. And I'm pinching. So now if he goes to move, everything's tight. This people do, but you don't feel the control as much as you do when you step on your foot and you pinch your knees together. And I reinforce it with my elbow in the middle. So I'm kind of reinforcing this, this hand on the knee with this leg. So if they go and they're trying to push and they're trying to skate and move, I'll just stay tight. Okay, everybody got it? One, two, three. You know what you're doing, I'll start there. 
Then I let him kick it straight. And I come back inside. Yeah, I'll just keep going back and forth. Or sometimes I would be here, and guys would push with their feet. And I'd start looking for my steam a lot. And I do this. Or I kick it. I start stepping. I used to do it just like this. I play, and I put my knee, my foot. Remember, I've got a sticky shin to the bottom of his knee. It's not here. It's to the bottom of his knee. And I put my initial foot on the inside, and I just pull him, and I just do this. I'm already inside. Open him up, start going here. Sometimes I go here, I straighten him up. I might come around. It's up to you. You understand, once you're inside of there, I'm moving all around this leg. I'm controlling this leg. All from that first essential Bermuda entry. If I do this and I feel he's stepping, he's going around me. See how I start climbing myself up? Keeping my knee on the inside. I don't want my leg on the outside, right? Because then he'll be able to get chest to chest. I need some sort of wedge between he and I. And I'm controlling the knee. A lot of times you guys are so worried about this. What you need to worry about is this knee line. If you lose this knee line, you've lost this foot. You can hold the Achilles, you understand? But that's all you have. But if you can control this knee line, when he goes to run, you control everything. See what's happening when he goes, run? I'm just holding on. I'm holding on for the ride. But a lot of times you guys go here. And when he starts running, run, you're hanging on, but he's getting more and more space. I'm controlling this. When he starts to run, he's taking me with, okay, I'm going. Then I can start and work some other stuff. But you have to control what? This knee line. Just holding on to the ankle is not enough. Okay, everybody got it? Let's go, we'll drill a little bit more, then we'll start rolling. One, two, three. Knee always. Whether I'm on the bottom, see how I'm controlling his knee? The direction at which his knee points. Or the knee here, when I shoot up. If I'm spinning around the back, the control is, again, what? The knee. Because if I lose that knee, I lose his hip. But again, you guys always concerned with the ankle, the knee. The knee is going to keep me close to him. So that if they go to run, I have control of this leg. Don't just focus on, on the ankle. Good control, too. If you can get the calf holding. Remember, I don't like this. This is a toehole waiting to happen. It's a toehole waiting to happen. He'll turn on you and you're like, oh shit, it's too late. I keep everything tight. And again, I'm always controlling that knee line. If I lose the, the knee line, I hold a foot, and again, I'm climbing a ladder. I go back to the knee. If you lose the knee, control the Achilles, go back, climb the ladder, control the knee. Okay, everybody got it? Just one other thing, if you're in a Bermuda, put down. A lot of times what would happen is I would be in the Bermuda, and everybody got so used to it, they started going, fuck you, I'm gonna put a foot on your chest to push me. And I'd just push it down, and I would get in the steam a lot, and I would turn. So I would just bring you right on top, and start to force the Bermuda, or I would throw my heel over. So whatever you do, do not push. You understand? If, you, if somebody's good at an esteem, you are going to pay. 
And I would do it and let you come on top. And I would let all that weight <coughs> sit on top of that ankle. And an esteemer lock is basically a toe hold using my body. I'd get it and I'd just bring them on top. Okay? So let's get ready to start. Uh, we'll have one guy on the bottom or one lady on the bottom and you'll be passing. You guys worked passing this morning, so this is a good opportunity for you to, to get into your passing. Remember, when you're on the bottom, don't stay like this. When I'm on the bottom, my feet are always to me. Why? Because if he can touch me, I can touch him. Right? If you're like this, they're going to be passing. I'm always like this. Because all I need to do is get one hand here and the other one here. You can play this off of your reverse de la Hiva, trips, come inside, step. If you want to try your false reap, whatever. All right, everybody got it? One, two, three.